Hello there, this is Hassan Gray before some my calling and in this video I'm going to show you how to create ripple effect for clicks. Before I start, let me show you what will be the final result. As you can see, there are two buttons with ripple effects based on where I click and they expand to cover the whole button. Now looking at my HTML file, I have two buttons already pre-styled since that's not the focus of this video and underneath I have my script tag where I will put all the code that creates this effect and it's not much. Before we dive into code, let's analyze the problem in hand. When I picture the ripple effect, there are a couple things that come to mind. The first thing is the tag where the click happened on the button. For the effect, I want the ripple to fill the whole clicked element no matter where the click happened. That means if I click on the leftmost corner, the ripple effect should expand all the way to the rightmost corner. The third and final thing is I need to think about how to handle when multiple clicks happen. The desired effect is to cancel the previous ripple and start a new one. As you can see, we need to figure out some formulas here. So let's dive in. First, let's set a self invoke function here that will call itself when all elements have been loaded on the DOM. I want to be able to grab any element and add the ripple effect. So I'll be looking for an element with class of ripple and then pass it to the function I will create shortly called set ripple element. Now let's create our function which takes the element. So on to solve the first problem, which is click location. And for that, I will create a dot element with simple style. I'm going to set the dot position of absolute with left and top to zero. Let's also not forget to make the element position relative. Z index of three. Let's give the dot width and height of three pixels for now and make border radius 50% so it looks like a dot. Display inline block and plain background so we can see it. We're also going to set transform translate to negative 50% to center the dot. The negative 50% shifts the element 50% from its current X and Y. In this case, left and top positions. Now let's add a click event listener to the element. First, I need to know where the click happened in relation to the page and the event return has page X and page I, I can use for that. From that, I need to subtract the offset of the button for both X and Y. Now let's append the dot to the element and I can set the dot left and top with X and Y. If I click the buttons, we can see the dot marking where the click happened. Great. Um, the second problem is to make the ripple expand to the furthest corner of the element. Let's look at some test cases. We have to consider what if the element is taller than it is wide or wider than it is tall. So if I draw a circle, the furthest distance is only the radius of the circle. I want my dot to start at the minimal size possible and then grow 100% times to create the effect. So to get the furthest distance, the formula is simple. Square root of the addition of the width and height to power of two. I can use JavaScript math and tool for that. Because I want my dot initial size to be 100 times smaller, I'm going to multiply the largest side by 2 to get the circle diameter and divide it by 100 to get 100 times smaller. Now I can use that to set my width and height. We will also start with the dot at scale of 1 and opacity of 50% and create a keyframe animation to animate the dot to 100 times the scale and opacity of 0. Now let's set animation here. Let's also hide the overflow of the element and try it out. Perfect. Now, as a bonus, let's dynamically set the color of ripple by expecting data set of ripple color on the element and check. So the background is fall back instead. Now the button looks and works fantastic. Let's also create two elements of different sizes to test the ripple. And as you can see, it works fine. <laughs> Great. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. Bye bye.